Hello, this is Mark from I Am Organic Gardening and welcome to part four of how and why plants build or grow the best soil. You can see it's the end of the season. Our popcorn is ready to harvest. It's drying nicely and we're going to save these for seeds next year so I can replant them. I started out with 100 seeds and uh, pretty much there's 100 seeds on that cob of corn right there. That's popcorn. They're very small ears. And we'll save that for next year to replant. And plus I harvested about another, say, 50 of them. So I have enough to use over the winter to make some popcorn this season. So in today's video, I want to share with you, uh, there's an assumption that corn requires a lot of nitrogen. And on commercial grown corn, whether it's popcorn or sweet corn or field corn, which most likely you see when you drive around, you see a lot of field corn. That's corn. Uh, most likely it's GMO or uh, other products like that that has uh, made its way into the corn industry. Now, this popcorn is not GMO. It's a regular uh, old-fashioned native popcorn seed. And... When you grow popcorn or field corn or open pollinated field corn, there again, there's an assumption that it requires all this nitrogen that's going to be coming out of your soil. So today I want to introduce you to another farmer that's on the internet and also on YouTube that has done research and I want to show you how his claim is showing that it doesn't really require as much nitrogen as you think it does. But first, before I go inside, we're always so concerned about how much nitrogen a corn plant uses. Now you can see here, now the okra plant, I'm going to say is about the same size as the popcorn or a field corn plant. It produces lots of okra, which you can see here. Uh, I stopped picking this. There's a couple in there that I'll use for lunch today and in the future. But my main concern right now is to let these go to seed so I have them available next year. They're going to do another great, fantastic year for me because I'm saving my own seeds. I don't have the initial cost of buying them anymore. And plus, I'm not putting anything in the ground or any cost. So this is pure profit for me. So the point I'd like to make is why are we not concerned about how much, let's say, nitrogen a okra plant uses compared to a corn plant or a tomato plant. It seems that every time someone plants a uh, corn that are always so concerned it's high nitrogen is because we've kind of been instilled in our mind that we use a lot of nitrogen when we grow corn. Now again, I'm going to go inside and introduce you to this other farmer and he can explain better than I can. And now it's over the internet. I'm just going to show you the information that he provides on his own YouTube channel. But I want to show you this because he's also proving that you don't require a lot of nitrogen for growing corn or other plants on his farm. And the point is, is that it all comes down to a very healthy soil that the plants are growing themselves. So here's a video of the person I wanted to introduce to you. His name is Gabe Brown. He's a farmer in North Dakota. He farms a little over 4,000 acres. And this video was published in 2014, December 8th, 2014. And I'll provide a link below for this. And this is one of the people that I speak to or email a lot to to ask for advice on my farm to how to build soil. Now he's been doing it for a longer time and he has a lot more resources than I do. And he's been very kind over the years giving me information to provide to you. Now, he did not grow up on a farm. He married into a, uh, he married a farmer's daughter and inherited the farm or bought the farm from the parents. And it was simple that he decided to do a whole different approach to farming because he was going bankrupt. They were losing money every year doing it the traditional way. So he was looking for other options, which I'll explain to you. So in this video, I'm at uh, minute mark 35, and I want you to hear directly from him what he's going to be explaining about a soil test and also his field conditions. And I'll explain a little bit after he says it. This particular field here, we went and took standard N, P, and K soil test. I know that's too small to read, but in the upper left it says pounds of nitrogen in the top 10 inches of soil, uh, top, excuse me, two feet of soil profile is 10 pounds. How many bushel corn crop can you get off 10 pounds of N? 
So what he just mentioned in the soil test that he had professionally done on one acre of land, it was showing in the top two feet only 10 pounds of nitrogen that was available to corn plants that he's going to uh, plant in his ground, his field corn, which is non-GMO field corn. Now, uh, usually it requires 100 or 150 pounds of nitrogen to get a decent crop. Now, he's saying the soil test is only 10 pounds, and so let's go a little bit further. Not much, I heard. I'll show you what I can do on 10 units of N. Here we are planting into that residue. When I say I'm a no-tiller, I'm a no-tiller. On the left is planted, on the right is not. Now what he's done in his field here, he has grown cover crops and he's rolled it down and terminated it like I have done in uh, my previous past. This is some winter rye in there, but he uses uh, even better cover crops than I do. He uses multi-species cover crops. He'll use uh, winter rye, sunflowers, turnips, uh, annual rye grass. Uh, there's a whole slew of them, but he'll tell you in the video what he put down. But you can see he just rolls it down and he just has this, let's say, uh, straw on top of the ground or this residue that's left over. And this is him planting, that's the tractor and the cedar behind it that he's planting into the field of his field corn with only 10 pounds of nitrogen showing uh, per acre. Now, a little later on in the video, he's going to explain uh, and show you how his field corn is doing. And he's having a gentleman come out from a major laboratory that does uh, soil testing. And he disagreed with Gabe here that there's no way he's going to be able to grow corn on 10 pounds of nitrogen. And you can see the results. Here's a photo of that same corn crop then at tasseling time. Dr. Ray Ward at Kearney, Nebraska. He owns Ward Labs. Him and I are friends. Uh, he used to think what I was doing was a bunch of hogwash. So, And now you can see how healthy that corn is. It's uh, anywhere from 8 to 10 feet tall. It's beautiful, dark green. Again, only on 10 pounds of nitrogen because he has healthy soil. The soil is rebuilding and recycling nitrogen all the time. So you don't, what I'm trying to say, you don't need this huge amount of nitrogen, 100 pounds, 150 pounds, an acre, or, or a large amount in your garden. As long as you have healthy soil, it keeps recycling it all the time. So he came up himself then and took these leaf tissue analysis of that corn. Every single nutrient he tested for was sufficient or above. I didn't add anything. We don't put on anything. We don't use foliars. No, no. Now I know this might be hard to read, but he took a, the gentleman at Ward Labs took a leaf sample and he tested it. And nitrogen is the first level. I know it's very blurry here and all the other things here. But you can see in this line here, everything is significant or better to be sufficient levels to give him a great crop. Now this is done with no fertilizer of any kind on a huge amount of property. So this just goes to show you even on a huge large scale as this gentleman Gabe Brown is doing, he does not need any fertilizer. He does not need to uh, put compost down. Does compost work? Sure, it's a good product, don't get me wrong. But you, in situations like this, you can't fill, uh, you know, 500, 600, 700, 800 acres of compost all the time. So we have to learn how to grow soil. And growing soil is what the key is to this planet because that's the way it's been done from day one. So now in this part, he's going to be going over the yield that he has uh, from all that corn. Average in... in Burley County, North Dakota is just under 100 bushels. We got 142 bushel corn crop. With so the county average was 100 bushels of corn, and he uh, grew 142 bushels of corn per acre. Without adding any, no fertilizers, no pesticides, no fungicides, 
no herbicides in this field and adding nothing to it. Since he's done this video, he has done talks all over the world. And there was another farmer, I believe, in North Carolina that uh, asked him to get advice from, and he started to uh, grow healthy soil himself. It took about two or three years on the land that he owned, but the last year that he stopped using all the pesticides and herbicides and fertilizer and he thought it was healthy soil to go forward, that gentleman, I believe, saved over $80,000 in cost of all the materials that he would have to put down on, this, on all the acres that he had. He saved over $80,000. So one is that this works. Number two, you can see it. Number two, that farmers are saving money and we are growing healthier food in the farmland. When you hear someone that says you have to have a lot of nitrogen in your soil to grow corn or other plants, just take a step back, do a trial, try something else, try growing healthy soil like I'm trying to educate you on and take a chance and also too you'll find out that it does work. It works because nature has made it this way again from day one and we have proof about it. We even have it on a large scale. It's going to be a long time for people to be convinced that this is actually happening because we've been told things differently over the years. I want to thank you very much for watching today's video. And you can notice in the background, I have a couple of tomatoes I had to still pick uh, before the end of the season here. And they're doing very nicely. The foliage is dying off, which is fine, but the tomatoes are ripening up. Uh, they're not as good as quality as I'd like them, but uh, you can still sell them because people are still anxious to uh, buy tomatoes even in October. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe, and I always appreciate your comments. Please leave them below. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks very much for again for watching.